Alors bonjour, euh, je m'appelle Matthew Kelway, porte-parole en matière d'affaires urbaines pour le caucus du NPD. Je suis accompagné aujourd'hui par Marjolaine boutin suite la porte-parole du NPD en matière de logement et d'infrastructure. Je vous remercie tous d'être venus ce matin. Thank you for coming. I'm Matthew Kelway, NDP Urban Affairs critic, and with me this morning is Marjolaine boutin suite uh, NDP critic for both housing and infrastructure. Today, we are releasing our NDP white paper. Before pen was put to paper, fingertips to keyboard, we understood our debt to our former leader, Jack Layton, on this issue. As a municipal leader of national stature and as a national leader with a love for cities, Jack put cities on the national agenda of this country. While we have retraced Jack's footsteps, we have also taken a step forward following the implications of the fact that 80% of Canadians live in urban communities, that we are indeed one of the most urbanized countries in the world, and that we are in fact an urban nation. And so our white paper confirms not just that Canada, Canada's cities belong on the national agenda, but that indeed they properly belong at the forefront of that agenda. The conclusion here is a simple one. There can be no national agenda that is not also an urban agenda. That nation building in the 21st century is also city building. To talk about Canada as an urban nation is not just to talk about where most of us live, and it can no longer just be about the fiscal inequities between different levels of government. It is all of that, but it's more. It's about the nature of Canada as a country. It is understanding the intimate economic and ecological connections between Canada's city and the remote and rural Canada that surrounds them. It is importantly understanding the integration of Canadian cities into the network of cities that defines the global economy. Our cities are connected, networked. The world has come to our cities, exposing vulnerabilities but also creating opportunities. And as it has, successive federal governments have fled, withdrawing support through funding cuts and downloading, and leaving Canada's cities to contend with sometimes growing economic exclusion, social isolation, and ecological insecurity, and sometimes rapid growth that they struggle to manage. In the absence of meaningful federal engagement, Canada's urban story has become one of wasted potential instead of what's possible. But to make what's possible real, Canada needs its federal government to play its part in putting in place the necessary physical, institutional, and social infrastructures necessary to put in place a modern, innovative Canadian economy, to capitalize on the opportunities that cities present for climate change mitigation, to ensure that we put in place a prosperity more equally shared. That infrastructure includes governance, infrastructure that would, for example, create a Canadian cities framework within which the federal government can work collaboratively with provinces and cities. It includes knowledge infrastructure taking, for example, advantage of the global connections of our post-secondary institutions to develop good local jobs and thriving urban economies. It includes built infrastructure, including intermodal transit that would permit Canadians to move around their cities efficiently. And finally, that infrastructure includes the social infrastructure necessary to make our cities prosperous, fair, and sustainable. And I'd ask Marjolaine, uh, as critic for both housing and infrastructure, to discuss uh, those aspects of the paper. Marjolaine. Merci, Matthew. Donc, Marjolaine boutin suite députée de Schlaga et porte-parole pour l'opposition officielle en matière de logement, d'infrastructure et de collectivité. Je ne répéterai pas tout ce que Matthew a dit, euh, mais je vais résumer un peu en français le programme urbain du NPD euh, qu'on qu lance aujourd'hui. Comme l'a dit Matthew, c'est un, un héritage de, de Jack Layton euh, et de la compréhension qu'avait Jack de la place que devrait occuper, que devrais je dis bien, là, occuper les villes dans l'agenda national. Les consultations qu'on a menées ces dernières années nous amènent à une conclusion très claire. Au 21e siècle, il ne peut pas y avoir d'agenda national qui n'est pas aussi un agenda urbain. On vit dans une économie globale. Les changements environnementaux sont aussi globaux. Pourtant, depuis des années, les, des gouvernements canadiens successifs 
ont pelleté de plus en plus de responsabilités dans la cour des provinces et des municipalités, et elles doivent se débrouiller avec tout ça comme elles peuvent. Le rôle du gouvernement fédéral envers les villes doit changer. Nous devons établir une relation où le fédéral agira en tant que partenaire pour assurer la prospérité durable des villes canadiennes. Laissez-moi vous donner un exemple tiré de mon, mon dossier de porte-parole en matière de logement. Parce qu'on construit peu de logements locatifs, parce que les logements sociaux disparaissent et que les listes d'attente s'allongent, le taux de pauvreté et d'itinérance, eux, augmente. Les chances ne sont donc pas égales pour tout le monde. Le résultat est qu'un grand segment de la population est laissé de côté et ne peut pas réaliser son plein potentiel. Une stratégie pan-canadienne du logement, qui pourrait par exemple redéfinir le rôle de la Société canadienne d'hypothèque et de logement, serait une façon dont le gouvernement fédéral pourrait travailler en collaboration avec les provinces et les municipalités, entre autres, pour s'assurer que tout le monde ait accès à un logement sûr, adéquat, abordable et durable. Même chose dans le domaine du transport en commun et des infrastructures. Les villes ont besoin de solutions à long terme prévisibles. Les villes ont besoin d'un partenaire fédéral qui comprend la place qu'elles occupent, le travail qu'elles doivent accomplir, par exemple pour réagir aux changements climatiques, et des obstacles auxquels elles se butent. Les villes ont besoin d'un partenaire fédéral qui peut les aider à prospérer plutôt que de s'endetter, à être proactive plutôt que vulnérable. C'est ce que le programme urbain du NPD veut faire. Alors, merci beaucoup. So the question is where, where from here? As a white paper, this document signals our direction and perspective, but it is also intended to be a vehicle for further consultation. But the key implication of the concept of an urban nation means for us, the NDP, that the urban must finally be embedded in the institutions, policies, and practices of the federal government. The NDP government will be a reliable partner and friend to provinces and cities and that an NDP government will do our part to ensure that Canada's cities are prosperous, fair, and sustainable places to live, because Canada can't be all of that if our cities aren't all of that. This will be evident in our offer to Canadians in 2015. Canadians can look forward to an NDP platform with the issues of urban Canada at its heart, and we believe that this document and ongoing consultations are proving just that. Thank you very much, and uh, we're happy to take any questions uh, that you may have. Matthew, can you speak about how you see this uh, agenda applying in, in Toronto more generally, and then specifically uh, where you see it fitting in with the transit plans of uh, new mayor John Tory? Well, Toronto, my hometown, I'm uh, the MP for Beaches East York, is um, a city, a um, great city to live, but also has uh, many acute needs. Uh, one of the most obvious things uh, about Toronto these days is uh, the issue of income polarization, the localization of poverty in parts of the city, mainly the inner suburbs and wealth, uh, mainly in the downtown and more infrastructure uh, rich parts of the city. So this, this um, agenda uh, sets out the possibilities uh, for uh, creating a more thriving uh, urban economy in Toronto where we have uh, very high youth unemployment of about uh, 18 percent but also the loss of um, a lot of uh, middle income uh, manufacturing jobs as well uh, but it extends also to address uh, the very acute housing needs uh, that we have in Toronto affordable housing needs and as uh, you point out Joanna the issue of transit is top of mind for most Torontonians there is a desperate need to get around their city efficiently and, and rapidly. Uh, we uh, welcome um, the opportunity uh, to talk to John Tory and of course the province about how to move ahead with a transit system uh, that responds to the needs of all Torontonians. Um, I'm kind of wondering how this isn't one giant overreach into the provincial jurisdiction because cities are creatures of the provinces. Most of the high in, uh, areas you have highlighted in here, like post-secondary, housing, child care, that's all provincial jurisdiction. So uh, I guess defend this uh, from a federal point of view. 
Well, I, I think we live in a country now where um, where jurisdiction is, is permeable. Uh, certainly uh, the things you point out are true, but they are also in part federal jurisdiction. But the first principle uh, that we set out in this paper in terms of the governance infrastructure is uh, the need uh, to collaborate with provinces and cities on uh, how to move forward. We recognize, uh, for example, that every province is different, uh, that the labor markets are different, the economies are different, and every city is most certainly different. And uh, this is a paper that is uh, fundamentally respectful of those uh, differences. But at the same time, what we've done with this paper is we've put Canadian cities into a global context. And uh, certainly our relationship with uh, the rest of the uh, world that we live in is very much uh, a federal matter of jurisdiction. And if our cities are the interface between Canada and the global economy and Canada and other countries, then most certainly we have a national interest in ensuring that our cities are uh, successful. It is where most of us live. At the, there, there is that very basic uh, point that, that uh, we begin with, that this is where 80% of Canadians live in urban communities. And Canada can't be the country uh, that we want it to be as Canadians unless uh, we ensure that Canada's urban communities, Canada's cities are the places that Canadians uh, want them to be question is uh, built infrastructure. Uh, the PBO this week said the cupboard's bare, so I'm wondering where you're planning on getting the money for this. The cupboard's bare? Sorry, can you explain? Uh, well, with the tax cuts they announced uh, this week, that pretty much ate up the, any surplus that uh, was coming down the road. Right. Well, we, we have been left in this country in terms of built infrastructure with an enormous deficit. We know that through, through, the, uh, through downloading uh, and budget cuts, um, we went through a generation of uh, no investment in uh, Canadian infrastructure. In fact, if you go back to uh, the Liberal regime in the 90s, uh, we actually cannibalized the infrastructure, the built infrastructure of this country, which is predominantly within city jurisdiction. But we look at this uh, issue of built infrastructure uh, in part as an investment. If you look at Toronto, there is certainly a consensus that there is lost economic opportunity through lost productivity uh, that stems from the gridlock of our city and that has been estimated to be uh, approximately six billion dollars and growing. So uh, where we approach these matters of built infrastructure is from a perspective invest of investment in our cities which is good for uh, our economy and, and uh, the growth of our cities. There is also an issue of necessity um, our cities have been subject to some very severe uh, climate events. It, it uh, is uh, uh, perfectly reasonable to expect uh, more severe climate events. Uh, we, we've had floods in uh, Toronto and I have seared in my memory the image of, of a, a snake swimming between commuters on a flooded GO train. Um, we, we can't forget the ice storm. Uh, people in Calgary uh, most certainly know uh, the, the, um, the effects of uh, flooding and, and these events are happening right across the country. So uh, we have to build resilient infrastructures into our city. That's good economics uh, as much as anything else. Any other questions? Thank you.